Hi, welcome back to the Solana for Developers YouTube series. In the previous video, we gained a solid understanding of the encoded key pair, which is provided to us by the Phantom Wallet. But now the natural question arises, how can we produce that encoded key pair in the first place? In particular, how can we generate a new Solana account? In order to do this, I'll start by creating a new file called new account.py and I'll open it up here. In order to make this a little bit easier for us, we'll use a Python package, which is just called Solana. And we will be actually using this Python package frequently throughout this series. I'll put a link to this GitHub page in the description below. So in order to use this Solana Python package, we'll begin by running pip install Solana. All right, there we go. And in order to create our new Solana account, we will use the account object from the Solana package. So I'll write from solana.account import account. And remember that our goal here is to generate a new account. Well, that part of it is very easy. All you need to do is write account equals account and uh, an open and close parentheses with nothing inside. Later on, uh, we can specify a private key here if we want to create an account object associated with a specific account. For example, uh, we have this account, which we dealt with last time. And so by providing the private key here, we could create uh, that account object. However, if you don't specify any private key, this will produce a brand new account. The remainder of this video is now just going to be uh, discussing all the things that we can do with this account object. So the first thing that we can do is we can get the private and public key associated with this account. So the private key using the notation of last time is going to be account.secret key. Secret key is just a synonym for a private key. The other thing we can produce is the public key, which is going to be the bytes version of account.public key. And uh, we may also want to take a look at the wallet address of this account. And so for that, uh, given the public key, we know already how to get the wallet address. And uh, from last time, we recall that we need to use the base uh, 58 package here. So I'll copy this import statement. And to get the wallet address, that is the base 58 encoding of the uh, public key. And if we want to express that as a string, we'll use the decode method. So I'll print here the wallet address. Uh, I won't run this just yet because I want to do one more thing. And that is to get the encoded key pair associated with this account. So one thing that we would like to do is to import this account into the phantom wallet. And one reason you would want to do that is if you are holding some Solana tokens in this account, it's going to be a lot more convenient to just look at that uh, phantom wallet rather than having to use code every time, for example, to see uh, what your balance is. Although there are some alternative benefits to accessing the account balance with code, and we'll uh, discuss that next time. So our goal here is to uh, import the new account into our phantom wallet. And in particular, all we need for that is to uh, produce the encoded key pair associated with this account. So recall from last time that the key pair is just equal to the private key plus the public key. And that our encoded key pair is equal to the base 58 encoding of the key pair and we'll decode, use the decode method to express that as a string. And so we can print our encoded key pair. And now we're ready to run this file. So we'll be getting the wallet address and the encoded key pair. The encoded key pair is what we'll need to import it into the phantom wallet. So I'll run uh, python3newaccount.py. 
All right, so that's looking good. The first line is our wallet address, and the second line is our encoded key pair. So I will now copy this and head over to the phantom wallet. And if I click here in the upper left corner, I can go down to add slash connect wallet. And the method I'm going to use is import private key. Now remember what phantom wallet is calling the private key is what we are calling more precisely the encoded key pair. So don't get confused there. And I'll paste it here. Uh, the name is optional. You don't need to provide one. And so there we are. We imported the new account into the phantom wallet. And to check that this is working out correctly, let's take a look and see what the wallet address is. I'll paste it here. The wallet address that we've just obtained from the phantom wallet is this, which is the same thing as the wallet address that we printed out down here, which is an indication that this is working correctly. So the last thing that I'd like to do in this video is to go back and discuss how to produce a, an account object from a already previously generated account. So recall here that we have already an encoded key pair and we produced a private key. So I'll copy this and bring it over here. And remember our goal now is to uh, define an account from an existing private key. So we have the encoded key pair and we access the private key as the first 32 bytes of the actual key pair. And now to define the account object, we simply write account equals account and in parentheses, we provide the private key. So now to make sure that this account is actually the one we want it to be, let's, for example, print out account.public key. And now I should make a comment here. First, I define the public key as the byte version of this account.public key. And then I define the wallet address as the base 58 encoding of the public key. Um, that's a more precise way to do it, but if you simply want to see the wallet address on the screen, you can just print out account.public key, but don't get confused here. This account.public key is not actually a string which is giving you the wallet address. And to emphasize this, I'll also print out what the type of this is. So let's run this file now. Uh, the first thing, that you see here is we have a new encoded key pair and a new corresponding wallet address because every time you run this file as it's set up currently you're going to be producing a new account and so you can imagine isolating this into a function and say running it a thousand times to get a thousand different solana accounts uh, but what we're most interested in here is first this uh, print statement account.public key you can see this is printing out the wallet address, which is exactly the wallet address which we had last time. So this seems to be working correctly. However, my word of warning is that when you print this out, it's just uh, the way that this Solana package is set up, it conveniently prints out the wallet address, but that's not really what this account.public key is. It's a class Solana.public key. And so in order to not get confused about exactly uh, what this object is, I recommend isolating the public key like this and then defining uh, the wallet address in this way. And just one last comment to show you how versatile this account.public key actually is, you could also just try to print out the string version of account.public key. And if we run this file, you will also see that in the last line here that that's also the wallet address. Uh, However, once again, it's nice to isolate the public key here, for example, as the bytes version, because uh, the key pair 
is then has this nice formula that's equal to the private key plus the public key. If you just go straight away to the wallet address by printing out the string of account dot public key, then you're missing this important piece of information, uh, which is the public key. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll discuss how to get the account balance of our Solana account. Thanks, see you next time.